In this tutorial, we're going to learn about the column container layout. When a container is a column, child elements are placed vertically on top of one another. When the container resizes, these elements still stay on top of one another. The column container layout respects its child elements' independent properties, like width and height, as well as if that child element has a container layout of its own. It will always stack child elements vertically, and the elements will respond accordingly. With the new engine, we have new ways to order child elements. The best way to think about this is that any child element in a container layout is really a position in a list. Here I'll select a child element and use its order controls to move its position. Here we have shortcuts for making it first or last, or we can reorder solely from hitting next or previous until it's in the position we want. The column container layout gives us one vertical column to work with to place elements inside. Therefore, with each of these child elements, we can horizontally align them within the column. For any child element we select, we can align it to the left, center, or right. When we do this and resize the page, everything is still stacked, though the individual alignment of this element is different from the others. Even if we mix and match alignments with the other elements, we can still see that everything stays on top of one another. The elements we currently have on the page are fixed by default. Whether it's a fixed width or height, with it fixed, the elements won't respond as the page resizes they'll just stay the same size. If we uncheck fixed width, we expose our min and max width controls. When doing so, the element will automatically stretch to its max width. And since the max width by default is infinite, it will stretch the width to the entire container the element is in, in this case, the page. Notice that an infinite max width renders our alignment controls useless, as there is nothing to align when the element's width is the same as the container. So there are a few things to note here. First, if we check fit width to content, the element will fit to whichever is wider, the min width or the contents of the element. With this checked, our element can now utilize the horizontal alignment controls for left, center, and right, given that we are no longer using its infinite max width. So if you wanted to replicate the look of the element from when it was fixed while making it responsive, this is the property you would select. You would also check this property for elements using dynamic text, where you're unsure of how many characters the text will be, the element will now fit all of it. With this checked, our max width will still be factored in and determine the max width the element can grow to as long as the content is wide enough. Even though the element will resize based on the content, the element will still respect any min and max widths if the content becomes shorter or wider than those settings. For example, I'll clear our button text and add a long string instead. The button will keep growing in size as the max width is infinite. If we had a parent container that wasn't the page, and it had a set max width, it would stop growing when it hit the parent container's max width. Likewise, if the button didn't have a parent container or the parent container is just the page, watch what happens to our text when we give it a max width. Our max width informs the button when the text should wrap since the button element can no longer grow. Without fit width to content checked and with a max width set, we can still align to left, center, or right, and the element will grow to its max width if it can. In this example, I set this button to be a few hundred pixels less than our page, so we can see how the element stops growing and how it stays aligned when we resize the page. As the page shrinks, the button will shrink to its min width, and as the page grows, it grows only to its max width while staying horizontally aligned to the center as we have it set. We have another alignment for stretching the element called stretch. In a row container, this would stretch vertically, but in a column container, this stretches horizontally. You would only use stretch when your child element is in a column if you did not need to align the element to the left, center, or right, and instead wanted the element to always stretch to the width of the parent. However, know that it won't stretch to the parent if your max width is defined. Understand that a column can be the page and how the page as a whole responds, or it can be any other container element and how the child elements of that container element respond. Setting the page as a column is the most popular way to build and organize your pages because as we've seen, the child elements of the column stack on top of one another. However, column layouts can also be used in any container where stacking elements is best suited. As an example, a group that's a sidebar may use a column since we want the buttons to stack vertically. Or another example could be in a pricing area where the card element uses a column so the elements within the card are on top of one another. And you can use the column for your pop-ups, floating groups, group focuses, and repeating groups. 
The column container layout is a new staple in how you can lay out your page and how it can handle responsive elements for you. That's it for this tutorial. For more, be sure to check out Bubble Academy.